Hello, this is Vern, and if you've been experiencing the demoralizing feeling of a guy that you're really into, giving you the bare minimum he needs not to lose you, but you keep hanging on by a thin thread, in today's video I'm going to reveal the top three types of breadcrumbing you need to identify and avoid, and the simple but powerful antidote to stop this experience from happening once and for all. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, games manipulation, or silly techniques, hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. If you're experiencing this devastating and low self-esteem inducing feeling and experience of someone that you feel connected with, someone that you feel hopeful about, someone that you feel intensity for, is playing in some ways with you, whether they're aware of it or not, and they're kind of showing up, but not really showing up. They're offering you something that allows the illusion to be maintained, but you, you haven't been able to pull away from them, and you're just getting strong along the way. You're not getting what you want, you get some intensity as a result of it, but ultimately nothing is really happening other than your self-esteem getting lower, you're not connecting to the type of guy you need to connect with because you're wasting time with them, and feeling low about yourself and thinking that there's something wrong with you. So if you've experienced anything like this, I, I have to share with you that this really happens, breadcrumbing as it's at its essence happens when you have ideas, hopes, and projections about a man that are higher or greater than the reality itself, but don't recognize it and kind of tell yourself some soft little lies and justifications so that you can maintain in that situation in hopes that your idea of him will actually pan out and give you that reward at the end, despite the uncomfortable feelings you're having along the way. Now, if you are in a situation where you're being breadcrumbed, I, the first thing I want you to know is that you, you need to give yourself some compassion. Because anyone who might look at you from a distance and say, you know what, you should be smarter, you should do this, you should end things, and you kind of know this intellectually, but you're not taking action, you're not taking action because there's psychological factors that make you feel like you can't do this, and partly you may not even be realizing or recognizing that you're being breadcrumbed. So this video has a couple of different parts. The first part is recognizing the psychology of white breadcrumbing is such a hard experience for you to let go of and how it's similar to an addictive behavior that we're kind of familiar with. And the second part is going to be focusing on what are the types of breadcrumbing you can identify and then the solution, the antidote that you can start practicing immediately starting today if you want to end this type of breadcrumbing if it's happening to you once and for all. Think about a casino and think about somebody who's gambling in a casino. The reason why people gamble in a casino is because they have the thought or the illusion that they will win, that they will give more, get more money back than they're putting into the slot or in whatever card game they're playing. Now, have you ever heard the phrase, uh, the house always wins? It's not just a phrase, it's a reality. Statistically speaking, casinos are built in such a way that you have the illusion of winning, but in reality, most people will end up losing and losing a lot. Now, there's three psychological factors that make this take place. The first one is called partial reinforcement. If you never won anything or never saw anyone win anything in a casino, nobody would go, nobody would play, nobody would waste money. But when you sometimes get something in a schedule that's not fixed, it's not every time you pull the lever that you get something, but every now and then you get a reward, you get some cash back, you get the three little lemons that show up, or you hear someone who's experiencing that, that is called partial reinforcement. And when partial reinforcement takes place, there's a part of your brain that produces dopamine that activates in a different way, in a stronger way, than when something is fixed and becomes more constant. There's a sense of adventure. There's a sense of, I'm not sure when this is happening, which is exactly the same thing that happens when a guy is not consistent with you, when a guy is wishy-washy, when he's sending a message here and there, when you don't know when he'll hear back from him, but when you do, it feels emotionally intense. So that's the first reason psychologically why breadcrumbing is sometimes hard to end. The second reason is called availability heuristic or availability bias. It's simpler to understand that way. And that means that when you are going through any type of experience, the thing you think of the quickest 
or the memory that has the most emotional impact on you in your mind is the most important factor you should consider. So let me share an example of how this applies to you when you're breadcrumbed. When you feel an emotional connection with someone, whether that's real or imagined, when you feel a level of visceral connection, when you feel validated by him, when you feel beautiful under his eyes, when you feel like he's a great quality man, whether he really is or not, it's not really relevant. Your brain interprets that he is. Whenever you have that level of emotional intensity towards someone, you might see five red flags back to back, but the intensity of the connection makes you go for this bias where you think that the most important thing you should focus on, focus on is see if something can happen because those five things that you saw in him, maybe they're not as important. The thing, the level of connection you have, that's so special, so rare that that's the important factor to focus on right now. And many women waste so many months and years of their lives under this dynamic. The third reason why, and again, similar to a casino gambler, breadcrumbing is hard to stop is because it's because of something called loss aversion. And that means that in psychologically speaking, something that you will lose becomes twice as important than the potential of gaining something. Like if you think about making a thousand dollars or preventing someone from stealing a thousand dollars that you already have, you will do more. It's more immediate. It's more immediate and it's a survival mechanism to prevent yourself from being being robbed of a thousand dollars and to figure out how to make a thousand dollars more. In the same situation, when you have someone and in your mind you've created the fantasy, the illusion, or partly real, partly fake, that the guy is some worthwhile, worth your while, maybe he's shown himself that way, but he's not showing himself that way anymore, then your risk of loss becomes more important than the possibility of gaining something that is more just, more fulfilling, and more worthy towards you. The last one, which is not similar to a casino, this is specific to dating, that makes breadcrumbing take place is when you don't step into your worth, you don't connect to your confidence and your self-worth. When you think that this type of experience is normal, when you think this type of experience is what you deserve, then or you do, that you won't get anyone who's better than this. This, is, this sucks, but no one will give you something more then you allow this type of behavior to take place. I'm about to share the three types of breadcrumbing so you can identify them more clearly. But before I do, if you decide watching this video that you want to go for more, that the guy that you're connecting with is not worth your time, and you want to learn how you can attract a better guy, then that problem can be solved with a video that I have on the first link in the description of this video. Uh, you will see a page that looks like this and you can enter your name and email and start watching a free training that will help you solve that challenge right away. The first type of breadcrumbing is what I call pre-dating breadcrumbing, and that is when a guy that you've connected with, and again, typically there's a level of visceral connection, emotional intensity, or high projection that takes place, you feel there's something special. And you can justify it in any kind of way that your horoscope told you, your feeling told you, uh, he seems so smart to you. Something happens where you feel a level of chemistry with him and he hasn't even taken the active role of asking you on a date, but he says, hey, it would be great to connect one day. And then he shares something with you. Maybe he calls you one day for 20 minutes and you're hoping that he's going to share, do you want to see me? And he doesn't do that. And then he just disappears. And then he comes back when you're kind of, in a better mood, better space, and he messes with your mind because, again, you get the feeling that he likes you, but he doesn't take action. He wants to have you there for emotional intensity, to feel validated, to feel handsome, to feel like he has some level of connection with you, but he's not taking any level of action or pursuit towards you. That's what I call pre-date breadcrumbing, and by the way, that's the easiest to free away from because there hasn't been a great level of time investment there hasn't been a great level of connection and space that's taken place. So I, I'll share at the end the, the antidote to this, but just understand that, that's, that you might be under that type or category right now. Second category of breadcrumbing is what I call post-date or pursuant breadcrumbing. And pursuant is a funny word because he might be half-acidly pursuing you. That means he takes you on a date, you get the feeling that you have things in common, he hints or promises that there's more and he doesn't follow through. And then every now and then you'll hear from him again, you might get a vague invitation, you might get a 
maybe we'll see each other this day or that day and it doesn't happen. And eventually you might go on another date with him, but it's very sporadic, it's not systematic, he's not consistently pursuing you. You are kind of holding your breath for other guys because for some reason, and it may not be a good one, you feel a high level of this guy's better than the other ones, or he's more intense with me than the other ones, or he's special, he's intelligent, he's good looking, he has his stuff together. Whatever it is you're saying to yourself to justify it, you think he's better than other guys and you're kind of holding your breath. You're not giving other guys who you don't feel are as cute or as awesome the time of the day and you're holding your calendar a little bit on open status uh, you might even cancel some meetings that you have or some uh, fun adventures you have with your friends if he happens to call because God knows when he's going to call you again. The third type of breadcrumbing is what I call relational breadcrumbing. And that's typically the most painful one. And that's when you were with, you've been with someone who maybe was showing up really strong at the beginning, maybe was never really showing up at the beginning, but you have the feeling that he's as good as you can get, that there's no other guys out there that can match him, that you're not beautiful or worthy enough to deserve more, or any combination of other types of painful beliefs like that. And when he engages with you, he's not moving things forward, he's not consistent about wanting to see you, you ask to see him because he's your boyfriend at this point, and he is busy, he has multiple other high priorities uh, that are more important than you most times, and you get the feeling that he doesn't want to be with you. And sometimes when he senses that you're disappointed or that you're starting to pull away, he revs up his game and he starts connecting with you again. And then you get the feeling that things change. And then once he has you under his hook, he starts slowly trading back and going back to his same old habits. And this is so painful because you can stay years in this type of situation if you don't take charge, if you don't recognize that it's happening. So what to do now? I'm going to share with you a few principles that can help you turn the tables around if you start being consistent about practicing them in your life going forward. The first one is, if you don't know what a guy wants, what he's looking for, and you're highly hoping for his call, waiting for his date, whatever, you're gambling. You're rolling the dice, you're playing Russian roulette. Why? Because your projections, the filling the blanks, that you're doing right now, metaphorically speaking, are making you think that this guy is better than he really is. Which leads me to principle number two. The quality of a man is directly proportional to his level of actions towards getting to know you, towards pursuing you, towards wanting a relationship with you. Let me dissect this a little bit further. That means that you can have a guy who is six foot five, if you're into tall guys, who has muscles of steel, who is a multi-millionaire and also happens to have a charity where he handholds poppies who are on their last days of life until they pass away with grace because he has that generous heart. And he's also a poet and he's also an artist and he's also charming, but he's also great with finances and numbers. Like he could be a guy who has all those skills. If he's not pursuing you and not interested in getting to know you, not interested in getting to move things the same way, not interested in the same type of relationship, he is not worth it to you. So don't invest in men based on the way you think about them. Step number three is invest in men based on their investment in you, their level of action towards you. The antidote to any of this, it sounds so simple, but it's true, is courage. And there's three types of courage you need to have if you want to have, if you want to stop this horrible feeling of breadcrumbing once and for all and experience the depth of love, companionship, spiritual connection that you've been seeking perhaps for your entire life. The first one is the courage to tell yourself the truth. When you start putting up excuses for someone not showing up, when you recognize that someone is hit or miss, when you recognize that someone at any of the three stages that I just shared with you is not showing up, move, you need to move forward. It's more challenging obviously if you're inside a relationship which I'll share with you what is the what, what is the thing to do there? So if you're on the first type of uh, connection, which is pre-dating, there's nothing to do. Stop connecting, stop wasting your time, no need to respond, no need to, I mean, just move on. If you're in, with someone who's kind of interested in dating you, or someone you're in a relationship with, then the next level of courage you need to have is the courage to state a boundary. And the boundary goes something like this. I'm looking for this type of connection. If you're dating someone, I'm looking for this type of relationship. I totally understand if you're looking for something different. Here's what I'm going for in life. 
if you want to play things at that level, if you're interested in that type of connection, if you're interested in that type of dating experience, I might be in. If you're looking for something different, I totally understand. No pressure on you. Uh, I need to move on. And then give them a chance to step up or step down, but not continue doing the sideways things that are making you feel so in so much pain. <laughs> and the third type of courage that you need to have is the courage to walk away. The courage to walk away knowing that if a guy is not showing up the way he needs to and he understands your needs, but he's not able to step into them, that you're not only hurting yourself, you're hurting him. Because the way you're going to show up eventually is going to be one where you let him know in your actions, you let him know in your emotional being that he doesn't do it for you. And he's going to feel like he can never fulfill your happy, your level of joy that you need in a relationship with him and you're going to feel like he's not a good guy enough for you. So instead of doing that, get the courage you need to tell yourself the truth, which is you can find love in someone else. You can find love in someone who is all in on you, but you have to be all in on yourself first. That is the quintessential thing that needs to happen. If you want a guy to fall in love with you and you're not in love with your life and you're not in love with yourself in actions, then you're asking for a mismatch. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful. If you want to learn how you can attract a high quality man, go to the first link in the description to watch my free training. If you like this video, click like and thumbs up and share a comment. Let me know what's your biggest takeaway. If you want my help and hand holding so I can customize a strategy for you that works and hold you by the hand as you implement it, then second link in the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.